talking. You know, like if you do it, like if you stand up, stand up. Probably a time. What happened? Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, the ceremony will commence. Could I please ask you all to take your seats and to maintain the dignity of the occasion, turn off your mobile phones or switch them to silent. Thank you.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robin Sears, and on behalf of the Chairman of the Council of the Australian War Memorial, the Honourable Kim Beasley, Director Matt Anderson, Council members and staff, thank you for joining us this morning for this special ceremony to officially dedicate the sculpture of Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle, the first of an individual nurse or woman to be placed within the memorial grounds. I would like to begin by especially acknowledging the members and board of the Australian College of Nursing, in particular, Australian College of Nursing President, Emeritus Professor Christine Duffield, and Chief Executive Officer, Adjunct Professor Kylie Ward, as well as the nurses and medical professionals here today. Representing the Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Matt Keogh, Minister for Veterans Affairs, Representing the Leader of the Federal Opposition, the Honourable Barnaby Joyce. The Honourable Richard Miles, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Defence. The Honourable Jed, Jed Keeney, Assistant, Assistant Minister for Health and Aged Care. Care. Senator, Senator David Pocock, Senator for the ACT. Director Helen Haynes, Independent Member for Indy. Mr Luke Gosling, Federal Member for Solomon. Chief of the Australian Defence Force, General Angus Campbell. Representing the Chief of Navy, Rear Admiral Sarah Sharkey. Representing the Chief of Army, Major General Cheryl Pearce. Representing the Chief of Air Force, Air Commodore Tim Alsop. Chief of Personnel, Lieutenant General Natasha Fox. Ms Rachel Stephen-Smith, ACT Minister for Health. Ms Elizabeth Lee, ACT Leader of the Opposition. I also particularly recognise the family, friends and descendants of Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle and the 21 nurses tragically lost at Bunker Island in 1942. I also welcome the many donors and supporters of the Bullwinkle Project who are joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, as we commence proceedings, could I ask you please to stand for the arrival of the Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia, His Excellency General the Honourable David Hurley and Her Excellency Ms Linda Hurley. Please be seated. I now, I now invite the, the Director of the Australian War Memorial, Mr Matt Anderson, to, to deliver the welcome. Thank you, Robin. Your Excellencies, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister, Leaders of the Opposition, Nurses, families, friends, distinguished guests. Dawara Nuna, Dawara Nanawal, Yangu Narawiri Duni Manyan, Nanawari, Dawura Wari, Ningara Dindi Wangarari Jinyi. I pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the lands on which we meet and their elders past, present and emerging. And as we do here every night at our last post ceremony, I acknowledge those who have served, those who are still serving, and the families that love and support them. Last Friday night and the Sundays, the Australian Defence Force suffered a tragedy. 
with uh, the apparent loss of, of four young aviators. And at this place, we acknowledge the service and the sacrifice of Captain Daniel Lyon, of Lieutenant Max Nugent, of Warren Officer Joseph um, Langcock, and of course, Corporal Alex Nag. For those who have visited the Australian War Memorial and entered the um, tomb of the unknown Australian soldier, there are four words which Charles Bean had put there, our founder. They gave their lives. He used to leave on the bottom of every letter when he was trying to raise money for this place uh, to have it built during the Great Depression. He used to quote, that's from Pericles, the funeral oration. Now the full quote is, they gave their lives. And for that public gift, they received a praise that never ages and a tomb most glorious. Not so much a tomb in which they lie, but one in which their fame survives to be remembered forever on occasion of word or deed, lest we forget. Now, my job really to start with an apology. I attended a, a, an event last night, a, uh, a thank you for sponsors here, and people kept on saying, 81 years the Australian War Memorial has been here, 81 years, and finally, it's taken us that long to have a, a named statue of a woman on the grounds of the Australian War Memorial. 81 years. In our defence, and I get paid to do that a lot, Minister, <laughs> in our defence, there are only four statues in that 81 years. The first in 1988 was Simpson and his donkey. I had the honour of being here as in senior year at Duntroon. The second statue is behind us in 1995, Sir Edward Weary Dunlop. The third one, presided over by our former chairman and former director, Brendan Nelson, was of General Sir John Monash. And, of course, now this is our fourth one. So to give you an idea... Here it's a very, very high bar to actually have a name sculpture on the grounds of the Australian War Memorial. But for those nurses in the nursing profession that are here and think that that's been too long in coming, please know that you have always, always been central to commemoration in this place. Quite literally, the centrepiece in the stained glass windows overlooking the tomb of the unknown soldier is a nurse. Staring back down Parliament House is the nurse with the words devotion. And also when you look inside the Hall of Memory and those 6.2 million Italian glass tiles, one of the four figures in there is also a service woman. And the only reference we have in our Hall of Memory to any individual action is the reference to the mythical beast, the centaur. And that's a reference to the loss of the Australian Hospital Ship Centre off the Queensland coast during the Second World War and the loss of 11 nurses. And in fact, that became a rallying cry during the Second World War to avenge the nurses. So that's sort of the, the, the plea of mitigation. And the final one I would say is, in terms of honouring Vivian Bullwinkle, Lieutenant Colonel Bullwinkle, I doubt very, very much that she would have allowed us to erect a statue for her while she was living. Because this is a woman who dedicated her life not to herself and not to her memory, but to the memory of others. And that's what's so poignant and wonderful about today's statue. It's about commemorating her and the service you know, with, the, with the disc down the bottom. It's about commemorating those who fell on Bangor Island in 1942, on the 16th of February 1942. So it was never about her. And I think the only reason she would allow this to happen, the only reason she's probably presided over allowing this to happen, is because she knew that in the honouring of her, we're also honouring those who she devoted her life to remember. So for me today, simple words of welcome, to, to thank you all, to thank all of those, and I see you standing at the back, all of our nurses and our nursing profession, all those allied health, allied health professionals. You should know, know this, only the fourth statue. Every single night here at the Australian War Memorial, we quote Charles Bean, and we say, here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves have made. The they in that sentence is you. The spirit that we will guard and we will guide and we will protect is you every single time we see this memorial to all who serve. You know, as a philosopher of the Dante once wrote, we build monuments to remember. We build memorials so that we shall never forget. We shall never forget the Tanker and Vivian Baldwin. We shall never forget the 21 nurses who were with her when 
uh, and it's tragically cut short uh, in uh, Vancouver Island. But we'll never forget that every time people walk past this monument, the statue, they will acknowledge the wonderful service and sacrifice of those of you who are devoted to the care and attention of others. You are most terribly welcome today. Thank you. the Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia, His Excellency General the Honourable David Hurley, to deliver the commemorative address. Well, good morning, and I too join in the acknowledgement of the traditional custodians of this land here. If you've been here along, you'll hear me say that we're blessed to live in the, uh, this beautiful part of Australia. Uh, the Magic to the south, the Brindabellas, Murrumbidgee, we thank the Ngunnawal and Abbey people uh, for looking after it for us and pay respect to all this past and present. Could I acknowledge uh, this morning uh, the Honourable uh, Richard Miles, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honourable Matt Keogh, Minister for Defence Personnel and Veterans Affairs, the Honourable Barney Joyce, representing the Leader of the Opposition, all members of the Australian Parliament. Ms. Rachel Stephen Smith, uh, ACT Minister for Health and members of the ACT Legislature, General Angus Campbell and senior members of the ADF, the Honourable Kim Beasley, Chair of the War Australian War Memorial and Matt Anderson, your Director, to board members, staff and volunteers of the memorial, to Emeritus Professor Christine Duffield, the President of the Australian College of Nursing, Mr John Bullwinkle, nephew of Vivian Bullwinkle, Ms. Philippa Dixon and Ms. Elizabeth Hannon, the nieces of Irene Drummond, to family and friends, distinguished guests. But I join Matt in just passing on our condolences to the Chief of Defence Force and all members of the Defence Force for the loss of uh, Daniel Lyon, uh, Max Nugent, Joseph Laycock, and Alexander Nags. Uh, Linda and I were up at on, uh, Talisman Sabre on that Friday and had just returned from the visit uh, when we received that news. We know how deeply it will be felt. It is a tragedy. Our thoughts are with the families, friends and other defence personnel at this time. <coughs> this morning's unveiling of what we could already see of uh, this statue of Vivian Bullwinkle uh, is a bit of a uh, continuation of a journey for Linda and I uh, this year in relation to military nursing. In May, on a state visit to Greece, we went to the island of Lemnos, or as the Greeks would say, Limnos, to, with the President of Greece, turn the sod to create a remembrance trail on Limnos Island. Limnos was the island from which the invasion of Gallipoli was launched. That's where the largest naval fleet ever in the history of humanity was gathered before 300 odd ships went into Gallipoli with the Allied forces. But we were there not just for the remembrance, to start that remembrance trail, we were there because the remembrance trail was being built in honour of Australian nurses. Because jutting out into Woodrus Harbour is Punda Peninsula, Punda Point, and on that point were the five hospitals raised to treat our wounded and ill that were extracted or evacuated from Gallipoli. So standing right in northeastern Aegean at the present time are work parties building a remembrance trail that centres on the role of Australian nurses. And these were the first women ever to be deployed as nurses by, the Australia, by Australia in our history. So to connect that today, it's like walking along that remembrance trail today and ending up with William, Vivian Bullwink. It's just a marvellous uh, connection for us both. So a great honour for us to be, Linda and I, to be here this morning uh, for this sculptural dedication ceremony. We we'll also remember, of course, the fellow nurses on Vancouver Island who made the ultimate sacrifice. And how special it is, I think, and how fortunate we are today that some member of Vivian's family are with us. It's an honour to share this occasion with you. I also acknowledge the many nurses, as uh, Matt has done, who are here 
participating in the ceremony and continuing to provide dedicated service to the ADF and to the Australian population. I'll try to do justice to Vivian Bullwinkle's legacy as best I can, but she is a giant. A remarkable tribute, as we see here today, to a great Australian. More than a tribute, though, this sculpture will be a permanent reminder of the values that Vivian Bullwinkle epitomised. And why is that important to us today? I think for two reasons. First, because our nation must never forget the sacrifices made by our servicemen and women, as Matt has said so eloquently this morning, and the contribution they have made to our country. The events that took place on Banker Island during World War II are difficult to comprehend. On the 16th of February, 1942, 22 Australian nurses were machine gunned by soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army on Raji Beach in the Indonesian archipelago. As described by Vivian to the Age newspaper in 1945, as we were thigh deep in the surf, they opened murderous fire mowing us down like a scene I saw in a film as a child. The women around me shrieked, stiffened and sank. Vivian was brave and lucky. By good fortune and with guile, she survived. But those Australian nurses who didn't were defiant to the end. And again, we're privileged to have family members of Major Irene Drummond here with us this morning. Major Drummond was the senior nurse of those nurses massacred on the island. And the worst of the nurses as they faced certain death. Get up, girls. I'm proud of you. And I love you. To speak to not only her bravery and compassion, but the bravery and compassion of all nurses on that island. We remember them, and we will not forget them. But we take inspiration from them. And I think therein lies the second reason why this statue is so sculpture is so important. Because remembering Vivian Bullwinkle, we're learning and thinking about who we are as Australians. Because through Vivian, part of that fabric of Australia has been woven. Her thread of our national fabric is represented here at the War Memorial and in this sculpture. A thread that tells us who we are what we stand for, how we go about life, and what our values are. Vivian Bullwinkle's actions during service and her post-service reflect values we attribute to the Anzac legacy, courage, sacrifice, endurance, and nature. Upon returning to Australia after the war, Vivian devoted herself to the nursing profession and to honouring those killed on Banker Island. She was an active member of the community, served as a member of the Council of the Australian War Memorial and later President of the Royal College of Nursing in Australia. She touched lives and helped and mentored countless people. Few, excuse me, if any, can match her impact, but we can all inspire to live by the same values, to persevere in the face of challenges, to sacrifice our own interests in the favour of others and to be brave and compassionate. She was and has been described by many as a symbol of strength for nursing. And that's what I see when I look at this sculpture. A remarkable Australian for sure, but also a reminder of the people who we are and the nation we aspire to be. So how fitting that we can come together this morning at one of our nation's most esteemed cultural institutions to honour a nurse of the calibre of Vivian Bullwinkle. In closing, I want to acknowledge the work of the sculptor, Dr Charles Robb, as well as the Australian College of Nursing, who in partnership with the War Memorial commissioned the sculpture. Today, we remember and honour Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle. Hers, is the story of a truly great Australian. It will resonate for many years to come as we see Vivian's qualities displayed both in our nurses and in our country. Compassion, selfishness, selflessness, loyalty, bravery and honour. 
what more could we ask of ourselves to be taking a lesson from her today? On behalf of all Australians, I acknowledge Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle's remarkable legacy of service to our nation. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. The Australian College of Nursing has been the driving force behind the Bullwinkle Project. The project serves to remember Vivian and her nursing colleagues and to inspire younger generations of nurses in leading their own journeys in the nursing profession. This project and the work of the Australian College of Nursing is what has brought us here together today. I now like to invite the President of the Australian College of Nursing, Emeritus Professor Christine Duffield, to provide her reflections on the project. Thank you. Um, if you walk down Raji Beach, as I had the privilege of doing in May this year, it's hard to imagine the tragedy that occurred there on February 16th, 1942. It's even harder to imagine it's, that it is a, ma a mass grave. Its peacefulness is almost surreal. It's impossible standing on the beach to imagine what it must have felt like for the 22 nurses as they walked into the water, faced as they were with the knowledge that they were about to die. None of us can know what we would have done in that situation. We can only hope that we would respond with the same strength and dignity as the stories indicate that they did. We don't know what their thoughts were as they entered the water. Was it a welcome relief after what they'd experienced? Were they glad it was about to be over? Was it better than what they faced in the future? We'll never know, but what we do know is they faced it together. They were not alone at their time of death and most of us will wish that for ourselves. We cast our flowers onto the water at Raji Beach to commemorate the 22 nurses who were shot. And as we watched, some of the flowers were taken out to sea. The rest floated back to the beach and ended up on the sand. The 22 nurses faced the same journey. Some of their bodies may have floated out to sea, never to be seen again. Some may have washed up on the beach, visible to anyone who walked along the water's edge. We know what happened on Raji Beach because Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Woolwinkle survived to tell their story. She could have returned home and faded into the fabric of Australian society, but she didn't. She testified at the International War Crimes Tribunal in Tokyo, telling her story for the world to hear. But she actually left a more lasting legacy than that on her return. She was a, a tireless fighter for higher education, but she was a mentor and leader for generations of nurses who worked with her after the war. She used her positions as a respected nurse executive and president of one of our predecessor organizations, the Royal College of Nursing Australia, to fight tirelessly for nurses to be better educated, to be educated in universities like all health professions, and to be present when any decision, decisions were made about health care. She was a very strong advocate for nurses and nursing's role in health service delivery. This statue is in memory of Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle, but it also commemorates the sacrifice of all women and nurses who have and continue to serve. The scholarships funded in the names of the 21 nurses who lost their lives at Raji Beach will ensure that their legacy will, will be remembered as will hers. Their names will live on, and the scholarships will ensure that nurses are better educated, undertaking leadership roles, and it will also ensure that they're shaping health and advancing nursing. We know 65 nurses sailed on the Viner Brook from Singapore. We know 12 were killed during the air attack or drowned following the sinking. 21 were murdered on Raji Beach, and 32 were taken prisoners of war, of whom eight subsequently died in captivity. To honor their contribution, I'm pleased to announce the Australian College of Nursing has made 64 of these nurses honorary fellows posthumously. And we've also made Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle a distinguished life fellow posthumously. In 1951, Dylan Thomas published a well-known poem about his father's worsening blindness and impending death, with the opening line, Do not go gentle into that good night. His message was to rage against death, 
to live life to the full, and no matter how short that life, to fight bravely against death and never give in. February 16, 1942, on Raji Beach. Our nurses did not go gentle. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Duffield. Following her experience at Raji Beach in 1942, Vivian Bullwinkle would ultimately be interned at the Palumbang Prisoner of War Camp alongside other nurses and allied service personnel. It was during this time at the camp that the Song of Hope, the Captive's Hymn, was written. Penned by fellow internee missionary Margaret Driver, the hymn would be regularly sung by the prisoners of the camp in the face of the hardships that surrounded them. As prisoners were later transferred to other camps, it came to be known more broadly throughout the region. The captive's hymn will now be performed by the members of the band of the Royal Military College, Duntrude.
Thank you, Professor Duffield and Group Captain Stein. Reeds were now laid at the base of the sculpture in memory of Lieutenant Colonel William Bullwinkle, the nursing colleagues and all those who have served and sacrificed in the profession of nursing. The first wreath will be laid by the Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia, His Excellency, General the Honourable David Hurley and Her Excellency, Mrs Linda Hurley. Ladies and gentlemen, as a 26 year old army nursing sister who was thrown into the horrors of a brutal and unjust human behaviour during wartime, Vivian grew up very quickly. She also experienced firsthand the greatest of human drives, that of survival, not only for herself but also for her fellow army personnel and civilians. During the years of her imprisonment at the hands of the Japanese, Vivian had to draw deeply on all her skills, training and natural cunning to survive and to assist others who were weaker than herself. In many cases she lost the battle to help her colleagues and the daily ritual of burying the dead was an inevitable occurrence that severely depleted the ranks of the prisoners. In order to survive these conditions, <coughs> resilience, resourcefulness, tenacity, compassion, 
for one's colleagues and determination <coughs> were all required. It is amazing how these young women <laughs> rose to the occasion in the prison camps after living such happy, enjoyable lives in Malaya before the Japanese came storming down the Malay Peninsula. Apart from her nursing training, the wartime experiences rapidly took Vivian to the harsh reality of war, where the need to treat the sick and the dying without food and medicine was a large part of the daily routine. Not only was the nursing training uh, a necessary part of the treatment, uh, but the inbuilt natural empathy that Vivian had for her fellow human beings shone through more than anything the training could instill. There were some very telling characteristics that Vivian outlined in June 1988 speech to an RAAF officer graduation dinner. These were, do not confuse popularity and respect. It is respect, not popularity, that is the basis of good leadership. Learning is an attitude where the mind stays open to change, whether it is today, tomorrow or next year. So keep an open mind and be flexible. You must not be rigid and your decisions and plans <coughs> must be adaptable to changing situations. Laughter is an important part of life. Oscar Ryle wrote, Laughter is not at all a bad beginning for a friendship. Uh, it is far the best ending of one. Friendliness is a happy and warm sensation and it makes us laugh. Friendship is active and means respect, mutual understanding and doing things together. You will make many lifelong friends during your service life. Humour is a necessary part of, uh, not a necessity in order to be able to perceive and enjoy what is ludicrous and amusing. For example, when I was a POW and the enemy gives you half a coconut shell on the end of a stick uh, to an empty 10 by 20 metre overflowing dysentery infested cesspit, it has to be either funny ridiculous or ridiculously funny. Many of these characteristics were lived out in Vivian's daily life. Following her wartime experiences, Vivian continued to care for the chronically sick and dying, which included the onset of the AIDS epidemic, although the causes were then unknown. Her career blossomed in improving the lot of nurses, raising nursing educational standards, creating the nurse aid position, and generally raising the profile of nursing and breaking down some of the traditional formality that was found in the profession. For example, she became known as the matron in Mufti at Fairfield Hospital since she did away with the formal matron's uniform around that hospital. During their captivity, Vivian and Betty Jeffrey decided to set up the Nurses Memorial Centre and after touring Victoria, speaking to groups and raising sufficient funds, they were able to acquire the initial property on St Kilda Road, Melbourne. They wanted to establish the centre as a perpetual memorial to all the nurses who died on Raji Beach to enable their names to live on and to provide a venue where all nurses could gather and meet and socialise. This centre has developed into an organisation <coughs> that fosters and rewards nursing excellence and provides scholarships for uh, continuing education which as a family we actively and financially support. Vivian was a great advocate of nurse education and this strategy would be one of her most cherished legacies in addition to perpetuating the memory of her nursing colleagues who were massacred on Raji Beach. The sculpture being unveiled today is significant in that it will be highly visible to the public uh, here at the Australian War Memorial. The statue will stand opposite another war hero, Colonel Weary Dunlop and Weary and Vivian were actually great friends and it will honour the first woman in the nurse to be memorialised in this way. <clears throat> Importantly, the statue will be vitally connected to the 21 nurses who died on Raji Beach by way of the perpetual scholarships in the, in the names of each of those nurses. Thank you to the Australian College of Nursing, the Australian War Memorial, and to all the donors making this statue and these scholarships possible. We're delighted and proud to be part of the ceremony that honours the view. <laughs> Dead colleagues, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul, for those reflections on Vivian. 
The Australian College of Nursing have been the drivers of the Bullwinkle Project and their Chief Executive Officer, Adjunct Professor Carly Ward, has been instrumental in the project's success. Professor Ward has worked with the Australian War Memorial since 2019 to see Vivian's sculpture brought to life and has been heavily involved in each step in delivering this monument to Vivian, as well as developing the legacy and honouring her 21 nursing colleagues. I now invite Adjunct Professor Carly Ward to deliver her reflections on the Bullwinkle Project. Dearest Vivian, as I have come to know you over these past few years, I sense you are not one who likes to be fussed over or to be in the limelight, especially with matters relating to that fatal day on Raji Beach, Banker Island, and the years following as a prisoner of war. I imagine you are probably looking down wondering what all the fuss is about and why, for goodness sakes, have we fought so hard to get a larger-than-life statue of you in such a prominent position here on the grounds of the Australian War Memorial. I want you to know that this statue and you are a symbol for all I hope nursing continues to be. Proud, determined, tenacious, disciplined, educated, dignified, brave, selfless and formidable. In honouring you, Vivian, we honour those who stood beside you as you were ordered into the sea. The 21 nurses who showed great character and bravery as they waded into the water and where they died with great dignity. In honouring you, we honour every nurse who boarded the Vinerbrook the 12 who died at sea, the 8 who died as prisoners of war, and the 23 who returned home with you three and a half years after imprisonment. In honouring you, we honour every military nurse, past and present, who chooses a life of service and sacrifice so that we are able to live fully and safely in our beautiful democratic country of Australia. In honouring you, Viv, we honour every nurse who has the right and privilege to tertiary education and to call ourselves a professional. In honouring you, we honour everything this remarkable profession stands for and everything you fought for, our profession of devotion, dedication and commitment to the fundamentals of caring, always striving for the best for humanity, for people's right to be treated fairly equally and with dignity. Thank you for gently guiding me through these years, Viv, and for ensuring no one gets left behind. We will keep the memories alive of the 21 nurses who lost their lives beside you. And in honour of your life work, they will be remembered through scholarships in perpetuity, so that every year 21 new nurses will be connected to your colleagues and they will be remembered long after we have left our posts. Vivian, the 64 nurses who boarded the Vinerbrook are now all with you on the other side, and I feel them today. I hope you are all looking down knowing we have only just got started. You are all our sisters and we won't forget you. It is an honour to award each of you posthumous fellowship of the Australian College of Nursing, the greatest honour bestowed upon a nurse by their profession. And I will take great joy in spending time with your loved ones as I continue to get to know each of you through them. Vivian. Through the hard, lonely years of the global pandemic, it was never lost on me that in the 1960s and 70s you were the matron of the Fairfield Hospital, Melbourne's Infectious Diseases Hospital, 
and I often thought you would have been well equipped to guide and advise us had you been here. You were the president of our predecessor organisation, the Royal College of Nursing Australia, and you left an imprint on so many people. I suspect more than you ever realise. I know you asked yourself many times why it was you who were saved on that day, on the 16th of February 1942. But seeing the contribution you made to keeping the memories alive of those who never came home makes it so obvious to me. Viv, you gave great sacrifices for your profession and for your country. You were a great Australian, a great leader and an inspiration to all. I only wish I had the chance to meet you, but wherever you are today, I say thank you. Thank you, Professor Ward. It is now my pleasure to invite military chaplain, Wendy Robertson, to dedicate the sculpture. for me to be here today because I worked as a registered nurse for 15 years prior to becoming a hospital and now an army chaplain. And Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle has long been a hero of mine. I'm going to pray now and if you are of the praying persuasion, I invite you to join me. Or if not, perhaps you could use these words as a point of reflection in your own heart. Loving God, today we thank you for Vivian Bullwinkle, in whose memory this sculpture was constructed, and her unwavering dedication to nursing. We acknowledge her incredible resilience and courage, her bravery and her tireless work in promoting the profession of nursing. We acknowledge before you, God, that Vivian's life stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable challenges. This sculpture stands not only to honour her remarkable contributions, but also to remember the 21 nurses who lost their lives in the Banker Island Massacre. We remember them now and their families before you, God. We remember Elaine, Alma, Florence, Irene, Minnie, Kathleen, Bessie, Dorothy, Rosetta, Florence, Clarice, Ellen, Eleanor, Peggy, Esther, Nancy, Ada, Lorna, Mona, Mary and Janet. May this art serve as a poignant reminder of the immense and ongoing sacrifices made by Australian service people. May this monument serve as a marker of Vivian's indomitable spirit, exemplifying selflessness and courage in the face of adversity. The qualities displayed by Vivian and her fellow service nurses of unwavering commitment to duty and willingness to put the well-being of others above their own are qualities we pray we will forever cherish and honour. As we gather here, God, we pay tribute to her and all nurses who selflessly serve humanity, offering comfort and care in the darkest of times. We ask that all who see this sculpture the first woman depicted in sculpture on memorial grounds may understand the integral role women have played throughout history. May Vivian's legacy inspire generations of nurses and people to come, guiding them in their own journeys of service and compassion. Help us all to follow in her footsteps. We therefore bless this statue in your name 
that it shall be a place where people can come, reflect, remember, and listen to the voice that Vivian professed, a voice of courage, a voice of leadership, and a voice of service. In the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Robertson. Ladies and gentlemen, could I now invite you to please stand as former nurse and member of the Council of the Australian War Memorial, Ms Sharon Baum recites the ode. After the ode, the last person will be sounded, followed by a minute of silence and the rest. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you feel comfortable and can do so, please remain standing and join in singing the National Anthem. Oh, my God. 